So our next investigation is going to be a place that we've actually driven through quite a few times on our way to other locations. It's somewhere very close to Thetford. <laughs> it's a place that always sparks massive debate in the car uh, <laughs> about an hour afterwards. I am, of course, talking about Elfden. Elverden. We are investigating Elverden, Elverden this tonight. Is, this, like, tonight, where we're going has been a mystery because you haven't told us at all. No, no well, I know you've both got a bit of beef about this location because <laughs> every time we've driven through it, the name Elverden has always sparked a little bit of a heat discussion. Um, We'll, we'll have it out right now. James, why is it called Elfden? It's called Elfden because... Elverden, there's an E. It's not Elfden, it's Elverden. It's called Elverden. <laughs> Elfden. Because when, years ago, people would travel through that area and thought that they would had heard the sound of elves playing flutes or something in the or playing music in the woods. And so they named it Elfden. Elfden because it was like a den of elves. But over time, the name of the place changed to Elverden. But the ne the name of the place comes from it being like a den of elves. No, it doesn't. It does. It doesn't. What's your re why is it called that then? I don't know why it's called Elverden. I haven't found that answer out. I just know that it's always been Elverden, as far it's the den as, of elves. as the eighteen hundreds, where they made fucking milk. And milk. goats and they made goats. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, but no, they, but they they, they, they brought it. over. I don't know. The it elves. was just no, they didn't. They didn't. It's the most deluded imagination of it's your called, mind. Right, it's called right. Elverden or El. What's it called? <laughs> El, 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 Elverden. But when you say it, you right. say Elverden. Yeah, yeah. As soon as he, it's not. It's Elverden. Right. Elverden. It's a derogatory or non derogatory <laughs> a derivative name of Elf Elfsten, which is where it came it's from. Not. Elves are real. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't matter. It's like elves aren't real. That's why the name of the Would you like me to tell you why are we going to elves in this evening? Yes. Do you want to tell Are we going to meet some elves? Well, Do you want to tell well, Sophie? No, you tell not, him because he's wrong. You're not hundred percent correct, either. Thank you. For years Elf during the medieval period was referred to as, uh, I can't remember the actual medieval name, <laughs> but it was translated as modern day as Valley of the Elves. That There's been matter. a number of accounts back in history of people walking by certain areas of woodland that have heard chanting and, flutes, and music, flutes, and music, elf music coming from within the woods. Do I think it's Elves, as we perceive them? No. I'm not sure. Because they don't exist. Well, really. that's what we're going to find out. But we're certainly going to go and find out if there is anything strange going in any of these woods. <laughs> there's also a couple of other locations there as well that I think we could probably hit and uh, see if there's anything else going on there. Wicked. Elverdon in Suffolk sits on the edge of Thetford Forest, a 47,000 acre pine woodland created after the end of the First World War in an attempt to replace the hundreds of thousands of trees felled for use in the war effort. The forest today is home to a wide range of wildlife, including many rare birds, and is a site of special scientific interest. The word Elfden is believed to have two different meanings, the first of which derives from the Old English word Elfdenu, meaning Swan Valley. The second, however, and historically the more likely, means Valley of the Elves. A 12th century work refers to a place that's almost certainly modern day Elfden and called it Ualum Nomferum, translated as Valley of Nymphs. Now at this time in history the word nymph could be used to describe something very similar to an elf and you can certainly see how over time this meaning combined with Elfdenu may have arrived at what we have today with Elfden. This rather curious name, however, is only one mention of this place is linked with small folklorish creatures.
The woods I'm currently in are known as the Milestone Slip, and a story from the 1800s tells of how a young girl was making her way along the road, where she became distracted by the sound of chanting, music, and high-pitched laughter coming from within these woods. She later said how she believed this was the sound of fairy folk trying to lure her into their magical dell. It was around a similar time that stories of horses becoming spooked along the same stretch of road emerged, many people believing that they were also being affected by the fairies' enchanted music. Today, Elverton is most well known for its centre parks complex, which opened in 1989. Whilst researching for this episode, I discovered a few reports of people experiencing strange things on their stays there, most notably poltergeist-like activity. Although I've been unable to validate these claims, and certainly they don't seem to be widely experienced, if true, they could indicate that the entire woodland is linked with supernatural events, which brings me on to the interesting concept of elementals. Elementals are supernatural beings that have been referred to in both occult and alchemedic texts since the Middle Ages. Originally there were said to be four different types of elementals, being Gnome, Sylph, Undine and Salamander, each representing one of the four elements. Now I certainly don't hold any belief in this rather rigid view on elementals, however I do wonder if what was being described was some kind of conscious natural energy. Looking back in history, especially to prehistoric times and even ancient times, many tribes and civilizations claim to have been in contact with spirits or deities in very remote but sacred areas. Could it be that what they were in contact with was some kind of elemental force? And I certainly think with Thetford Forest's enormous natural environment, is it possible that an elemental force is now dwelling in these lands? Just down the road from the Milestone Slip is another area of the village with an old legend attached to it. There's two variations to this story, the first of which is that a local man named Marmon committed suicide and is buried somewhere in this area. The second is that Marmon was in fact a local landowner and was beaten to death by poachers after a disagreement. Either way, this particular woodland has been known for many years as the Dead Man's Lands and some believe that his ghost is still haunting here to this very day. Is there anybody in these woods with us? See, this, this is the only issue we've got, the road. Here. It's quite a main road as well. Yeah. Especially with a lot of the road works going on in the middle. I kind of have a feeling though, that because that road is so busy, people aren't going to be looking over this way. Yeah. So to the bunk stuff now as well, I can't hear anything that sounds like it would be music. No, all, all you've got at the moment is the sound of the road and then traffic that goes past on the B road next to us. It sounds like, like uh, not next to like a motorway, but like a couple of roads over. Yeah. We've heard stories that there's something or someone that resides in these woods. And that you might not be of human origin. Are the elves here? No. Noises everywhere now. We've got some bits of equipment that we've set up here. 
that you might be able to use to communicate with us. If you can move around any of those. It's not, it's not starting to rain or something, is it? No, it's quite forecast, isn't it? No. There's just a lot of little noises, but it could just be natural. Yeah, things falling from trees. You've got two instruments set up there on that log and one on the stump over there. If you can move around either of those, that will notify us that you're with us. Maybe it's just like dialing into the environment. I can I can sort of like hear lots of little movements now. I couldn't hear before. Yeah. People say that they've heard music coming from these woods. And that horses used to be scared of coming past. Are you aware of that at all? I reckon it must have been back in the olden days, it must have been quite a lot different from now. Yeah. I think that was, I mean, it's, that's a busy road, but it's, um, it's quieter than it used to be, I think, in terms of, I think that used to be the main route. Right. Um, so, like, obviously it would have been horses and whatnot, but... Do you say something about horses got scared? Yes, apparently around these woods is where horses used to not like going past, whether that was because of something... I mean, people say it's because there was something in the woods, but whether that's the reason or there's, you know, there was some other reason, but... Come and move around us into this environment. Move around these lights in this log. I know a lot of people don't visit these woods anymore. A lot of people go past and they probably look in, but I know certainly looking at it, I don't think a lot of people actually come in into this area. Are you two picking up like any animals? No, I've not heard anything. No. I've heard the odd little, but I can, in my head, I'm like, it sounds like animal rustling. Yeah. It's not anything otherwise. Other than a few strange noises, which are undoubtedly caused by small animals crawling through the undergrowth, we didn't experience anything at the milestone slip, so made our way over to the second location, which is today known as the Dead Man's Lands. Okay, let's go through. Have you got any idea of like location for? No, again, it's just stuff. Oh. Look at the moss on the ground. You're right. I might just go and join Lauren in the car. <laughs> That's a bit creepy. I don't. I don't really. Fit me behind that fence down in the middle of the Yeah, but they, they could be alerting someone to us. Quite down. That's getting closer. Hold up, hold up. Sounds like some sort of hound. That's getting closer. Sounds very houndy. Is that a happy dog? What do you reckon? Um, I mean, I'm not keen, but on your reds be it. Well... There's only some woods, isn't it? I don't think this is private. 
We didn't say there's a house there. Yeah, behind the gates, though. Should we go to the church? Yeah. Can we go to the church? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's going to be thing as well. Like, the longer we're out here, the more it's going to be barking, the more someone's going to want to come and have a look. Not wanting to distress the nearby dogs any further or create a nuisance, we returned to the car and headed over to the third and final location for the evening, the churchyard. Is there anybody in this churchyard, in the church, anybody around here that can come speak to us? I've just come here to visit, we don't mean you any offence by being here. We were passing by and thought this would be a worthwhile place to have a look at, and it certainly is. Anybody down the corridor, I'm going to place this instrument on the floor, it's got a little red light on it, and what I want you to do is speak into it if you can. I'm going to place it down now. If you can come towards that and just speak into it loudly and as clearly as you can. What was that? It sounds like a cat. Yeah, we saw a cat in here earlier. Did you? You tell us your name. There you are. Should we go actually out of here in the graveyard itself? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, I've just got a funny feeling about EVP here. What's that noise? It's a fox. Well echoey. Right you remember what we had at the um, Elizabethan house? Where you was just like, try you know, do what go you, with what you're go thinking. What you think. Yeah. For some reason here, I'm just thinking EVP for some reason. Yeah, you've been doing a lot more EVP stuff than other places we've been to. Yeah, I don't know why, I just had a thought maybe, I don't know. Roll with it, I reckon. I, like, instantly feel more anxious about being out here than in that really dark yeah. tunnel. It's really weird. Is it because you're more like in an open spot? Maybe. It can be seen from every angle. Well, speak away. Let's ask questions. Is there someone here in this graveyard with us? If there is, can you come forward? Can you tell us your name? There's a lot of noise going on in those woods over there. Yeah. Is anyone here? Can you come towards me, please? Come towards us. We just come here to talk. We don't mean you any harm, any offence by being here. Just come to visit this lovely church and churchyard. I 
What's that? Like beeping? I think it's a bird. There's a lot of sounds going on over in those woods. Yeah. I'm going to try and go back in the tunnel bit. We concluded our investigation of the churchyard around midnight, having experienced no activity at any of the three locations. Unfortunately, despite our best efforts, we were unable to document any evidence that would lend credibility to the folklore the area is shrouded in. All was not lost, however, as we were finally able to put to rest a decade-long debate as to the origins of the name Elverdon.